Bhagavad Gita, chapter 6, verse 30. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Bhavlava Girivaradhari Jaya Gopi Jana Bhavlava Girivaradhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Banachari Yamuna Tira Banachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Gopi Janabala Bhagiri Varadhari Jaya Gopi Janabala Bhagiri Varadhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Banachari Yamuna Tira Banachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Om Vishnu Pada Paramahamsa Paribraja Kacharya Sutara Sata Sri Sri Madesi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shira Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai Nama Acharya Sira Harila Stakur Ki Jai Prince Kaho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sri Vasadi Gora Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopinata Shama Kunda Radha Hakunda Giri Govardhan Ki Jai Sri Vrindavan Mathura Dham Ki Jai Navadip Mayapur Dham Ki Jai Jamuna Mai Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Tulsi Devi Ki Jai Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai All Glories to the Assembled Devotees all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 6, verse number 30. Yo mam pasyati sarvatra sarvameva mai pasyati tasyam na pranasyami Sachame na pranashyati Yo mam pasyati sarvatra sarvam cha mai pasyati Tasyaham na pranashyami Sachame na pranashyati Yo mam pasyati sarvatra sarvam cha mai pasyati tasyaham na pranasyami sa cha me na pranasyati Ya, whoever mam mi pasyati sees sarvatra everywhere 
sarvam everything cha and my e in me pashyati he sees tasya his aham i na not pranashyami am lost sa he cha also me to me na not pranashyati is lost translation and purport of shri prabhupada for one who sees me everywhere and sees everything in me i am never lost no is he ever lost to me purport a person in krishna consciousness certainly sees lord krishna everywhere and he sees everything in krishna such a person may appear to see all separate manifestations in the material world nature but in each and every instance he is conscious of krishna knowing that everything is a manifestation of krishna's energy nothing can exist without krishna and krishna is the lord of everyone of everything this is a basic principle of krishna consciousness krishna consciousness is the development of love of krishna a position transcendental even to material liberation it is the stage beyond self realization in which the devotee becomes one with krishna in the sense that krishna becomes everything for the devotee and the devotee becomes full in loving krishna an intimate relationship between the lord and the devotee then exists in that stage the living entity attains his immortality no is a personality of god at ever out of sight of the devotee to merge in krishna is spiritual annihilation a devotee takes no such risk it is stated in the brahma samhita premanjana churita bhakti vilocharena shanta sadeva ridayeshu vilokayanti yam shama sundara machunta guna sarupam govinda mari purusham tamaham bhajami i worship the primeval lord govinda who is always seen by the devotee whose eyes are anointed with the pulp of love he is seen in his eternal form of sham sundar situated within the heart of the devotee brahma samhita 538 At this stage Lord Krishna never disappears from the sight of the devotee nor does the devotee ever lose sight of the Lord in the case of a yogi who sees the Lord as paramatma within the heart the same applies such a yogi turns into pure into a pure devotee and cannot bear to live for a moment without seeing the Lord within himself yomam pashyati sarvatra sarvam cha mai pashyati tasya ham na pranashyami sacha me na pranashyati elsewhere in a, in a bhagavad gita krishna explains that one who is one who becomes humble but dent of knowledge sees krishna everywhere he doesn't see a brahmana or an elephant or a dog or a dog eater or a monkey or a, nothing everywhere he sees within that manifestation the presence of krishna and krishna is everywhere sarvasya chaham ridi sane vishnu he says i am in the heart of everyone ishvara sarva bhutanam ridesh arjuna tishtati he is situated tishtati in ridai in the heart of everyone so no one needs to go anywhere to become self realized self realized means self self means me i you myself realize means to understand who i really am which is the spirit within and who am i I am the eternal friend, the eternal servant, the eternal lover, the eternal uh, 
bond with Krishna is within me. It is nowhere else. And Lord Chaitanya also, he accentuated this. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Shadya Kabunai. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema, Krishna Prema, love of God. It is Nitya Siddha, it is eternally manifested, eternally present, eternally perfect within the heart. And how do we awaken this? How do we tap into this? Shravanadi, by hearing. Adi means to begin. What? Shravana, hearing. Why do we need to hear? Because hearing cleans the mind. Shuddha chitta, cleans the consciousness. Then karayudoy, automatically it will become manifested. It's just like looking into a mirror. If the mirror is dirty, you only see the dirt. Even if you see your face behind the dirt, it is not defined, it is not clear. But once you clean the mirror, ha, ah, then you see exactly what is going on. So in the same way, when we clean the mirror of the heart, that presence of Krishna, which is already there, just like my reflection in the mirror, it is already there. The mirror may be dirty, but the reflection is there behind the dirt. Once the dirt is clean, you see your face. In the same way, once you clean the contamination of the heart, what is this contamination? The contamination is to identify with the body, to identify with, uh, with uh, Deya Hapatya Kalatra Dishu, Deya, identifying with the body, Apatya, identifying with my children, with my family, Kalatra, identifying with my wife, Atma Shainyeshua Satsupi. These things were very, very important in the material world, or very, very, uh, or the very bond that keeps everybody together. A man works for his family. He sacrifices everything for his family. But it is, so they are considered like soldiers, the family, the wife, the house, the children, the bank balance, they're considered uh, the most important treasures for a man or a woman. But therefore they are like soldiers on my side to defend myself. In other words, they are my property, they are my protectors, my, my love, my affection is protected by the wife and the children. But it is asatsu. It is temporary. That is the problem. Tesham pramatta nidanam. And because we identify with this temporary thing, when death comes, we come down. We, that relationship is broken. We take another birth. Pashana pina pashati. Even though we can see this, I can see that everybody is dying. My father has died, my mother has died, and my, my grandparents, all are dead, all gone. Where are they today? But we don't see. We, we keep this attachment. We don't ask the question, why am I dying? Why am I getting old? Why am I going to take it? Where are all these births coming from? You may not believe in a rebirth. In fact, today's mainland religions they don't teach you about rebirth. Universities, they don't teach you about rebirth. But if you look around, there are millions of living entities being born every minute. It is going on. You cannot deny it. So, Asatsu is temporary. This is the real problem. Even if you materially successful, it will come to an end. Therefore, Krishna says, from the topmost planet, A Brahma. Brahma means the topmost planet. When you put an A in front of Brahma, it means from A Brahma, from Brahma Loka, Bhuvanal, to this level, to the bottom planet, from the top planet to the rest of the planets in the universe, Punar Avartino. It is a place where you keep returning. That was Krishna's advice to Arjuna. Puna Avartino Arjuna. It is, my dear Arjuna, you may not want to fight. You may 
be protective of your relatives and don't want to kill them, but understand that it is a temporary situation. So, the advice of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is by hearing we can become, in other words, if we actually discuss the temporary nature of the world, if we actually ask the question, who am I? What is the purpose of my life? Then the whole, the whole dynamic changes. Because we don't ask these questions, we become attached to the temporary material world. And because it is a deep, deep between us, we, we have this propensity to be independent of God. It's like a child. We are like spiritual children. We simply take, 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 take. Oh, everything here, the material nature is there. I am produced by the material nature because I'm identifying with the body and the body is produced by material nature. Therefore, I belong to the material nature. The material nature is there for me to enjoy it. Just like a child, he doesn't ask. He doesn't understand about the parents. A small child, very small baby, a small child, he simply takes. He, he doesn't know anything else. He only knows that when he's hungry, he has to cry and his mother will come running. As he grows up, when he needs something, he simply has to, uh, he simply has to look at his father. His father will provide. In fact, mother and father provide in advance. They know exactly what the child needs. So spiritually, we are like children. We simply take Krishna's property for granted. If we at all think about our spiritual nature and the, and, and the creator of the universe, creator of everything we see, we simply, we simply use it as a means to enjoy and exploit. But as the child grows up, slowly the table turns. The child becomes an adult. The parents become old. The child takes care of the parents. It's a natural situation. Uh, in every society, especially in India, even in my society, where I grew up in Italy, it was considered, uh, it was considered a, a shame for any family to send the old people to an old age home. It just didn't exist. Even to this day, I see that my cousins, they take care of their, they took care of their peasants at home to the, of their parents at home until they died. They never sent them to an old age home. It doesn't exist. Only here in, 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 Western, in Northern Europe and America, they have these old age homes. That, because the child understands that when I was small, I was given so much care and attention by my parents. Now it is my duty to pay back. So spiritual enunciation is like that. It begins with an understanding that I have a duty towards the creator of the universe. I am allowed to ask who created and what is my relationship. Then those questions come from the heart. When you ask those questions, then Krishna, who is the Chaitya Guru, is the, the Lord of the heart, is the Guru, the teacher within the heart, he will automatically send you the answers through a living guru. Actually, the whole thing is transcendental. It doesn't depend on any physical contact. Simply by relying on Krishna, everything will become manifested. Just like Krishna provides my food every day. He provides my shelter. He provides everything I need Will he not provide me a guru with knowledge to understand my relationship with him? He will give me everything except the most important thing. So the question is not to look around who is guru. The question is to ask Krishna, please give me knowledge and Krishna will do the rest. But Krishna being Krishna, when you connect with him, your love for him becomes manifested at the same time. What, what inspires love in us? What inspires love in us is when other people are loving towards us, like our parents. We love our parents because they take care of us. 
uh, in India, in, in the so-called arranged marriages, the husband and wife don't know each other. But gradually, gradually, the wife serves the husband and he becomes obliged and love becomes manifest. That love is already there in our heart. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema. It is eternally present. Simply by hearing, we can manifest it. This is a great gift of Krishna in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Shuddha Chitta, it purifies our consciousness. And this is, and when you, when you come to this stage, then the meaning of this verse becomes clear. That you see Krishna everywhere, and you see Krishna in everything, then you are never lost. It's just like, the joke in Calcutta, there is a big bazaar, Bara Bazaar, and the main traders there are Marawaris, a gentleman from Rajasthan, or very expert businessmen. If the market is going up, they make a profit. If the market is going down, they still make a profit. Because when the market is going up, they sell the goods of the profit. When the market is going down, they buy the goods and store them. And when the market comes up again, again, they make a profit. So up or down, it makes no difference. So for a devotee, whatever comes, good or bad, it makes no difference because he understands everything is coming from Krishna. Bhaktivinoda quotes, Atma samarpane, when I give my soul, my consciousness, when I give my consciousness to Krishna, Gelo Abhiman, my false ego goes away. When you internalize your, your, your consciousness, when you hear from a bona fide source and you connect with Krishna in the heart, then your false ego of identifying with the body goes away. You no, lo no longer think I'm this body. You understand you're a spirit soul. So, Nai Kurumunami Rakkavidan. And when I surrender to Krishna, Bhaktivinod says, I don't have to maintain myself. I don't have to think who's going to protect me because Krishna will protect me. My God is protecting the entire universe. Nobody can challenge the laws of nature. Nobody can challenge old age, disease, and death. It is unchangeable. It is written in stone. So what do I have to worry about? Look around. Krishna is maintaining everybody. He will not maintain me, his devotee. Of course he will maintain you. And when you come to this point, then this Krishna consciousness means that, you, that Krishna becomes, the satisfying Krishna becomes the purpose of every activity. Everything you do, you will think, is this pleasing to Krishna or not? This is a sign of somebody who understands his spiritual nature, that he connects everything with Krishna. He doesn't exploit anybody. He doesn't, he's not eager to get more than what he has. He is very humble and very meek because he knows he's dependent on Krishna for everything. There is, there is no reason to be proud. There is no reason to ask for respect from others. There is no reason to try and get opulence or money or or, or anything. There is no reason because everything is coming from Krishna and simply by understanding this we connect everything. So Vidya Vinaya Sampane, the purpose of knowledge is to become humble, not to become proud. You cannot demand respect from anybody. Automatically all those, everything is left to Krishna your protection, your maintenance, everything is left for Krishna. And in this way, we become happy. We become liberated. This liberation, liberation means that wherever you go, you never forget Krishna. Therefore, a pure devotee, he doesn't even ask. There are four kinds of liberations. He doesn't ask to be liberated. The first liberation is Sayuja. That means to merge into the effulgence of Krishna. We are spirit, spirit sparks, bright and shiny. When we lose the covering of our mind, intelligence and ego, and we lose the covering of our physical material body, that spark is a bright illuminating more than a million stars. And it is exactly being 
illuminated by the power coming from Krishna's body. So we can enter into that effulgence. That is called Sayuja Mukti. The problem with that Sayuja Mukti is that you can enter in that effulgence but not have a direct connection, a direct friendship with Krishna. You're simply existing in the light, in eternity. And because we are individual sparks, our individuality will push us to become active and then we fall again into the material plane and take a material body with which our activities can be performed. So this is called Sayuja Mukti. So Sayuja Mukti, your liberation in the oneness of God is rejected by a devotee. It is considered like hell. Then there is Sar Salokya. Salokya muk muk Mukti means that you can live in the kingdom of God. But living in the kingdom of God doesn't necessarily mean having a close connection with Krishna. You can see him from a distance, you can pay your respect, especially in Vaikuntha, and it is not the, the personality of Krishna, but it is his expansion, Vishnu. So we worship Vishnu with awe and reverence. We can live in the same planet as him. That means we can live eternally. We never have to come back to this material world. So, Sayuja, Salokya, Sarupya. Sarupya means you can have the similar form as Krishna. Just like Krishna's associates, some of them, they also have, in Vaikuntha, they have four arms. Even in Goloka Vrindavan with Krishna in his original form as Skyward Boy. His friends are equally beautiful, equally dressed. Krishna has a flute and a, and a, and a buffalo horn and a stick to control the cows. His boyfriends have also a stick and a flute and a horn. So in this way, this is called Sarupya, having the same sus. Sasri, Salokya, Sarupya. Samipya means that you can associate, become one of Krishna's intimate servants. It's called Samipya. And Shastri, Shastri means you have the same opulence as Krishna. So these four liberations are not accepted by the devotee, especially the first one, but even the other three. A devotee doesn't accept to be liberated unless he is engaged in the servant of Krishna, in the service of Krishna. This is the great benediction by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that he that he he gave us the means by which we can reconnect with Krishna in love and affection. We can re uh, we can reawaken the love of Krishna. And when you fall in love, then everything becomes beautiful. Even in material love, everything becomes wonderful when you fall in love. What to speak if you fall in love with your eternal lover, Krishna? Then you're never lost. You're never disturbed. Birth, death, it doesn't matter whether you live, whether Krishna wants you in the spiritual world or whether Krishna wants you in the material world, it doesn't matter. Ashli Shava, Krishna may embrace me, Padaratam Pinashtumam, or you may trample me down. Adarshanam Marmahatam, he may break my heart but not be invisible. But Mat Prananata Susahevanapara, you will never stop being my Prananath my beloved in my heart. Whether you treat me nicely or not, it doesn't matter. This is love. Good. Thank you very much. So we have some comments. Mandi Priyo from England, Hare Krishna. Ronald Singh, for my ex-swami, Pranam, yes, I'm an ex-swami externally. But internally, for the last 20 years, I've been living like a sannyasi. I live alone. I have no connection with women in any way. Actually, I'm a better sannyasi now than I was when I was wearing my saffron cloth. Because when I was wearing my saffron cloth with my danda as a sannyasi, I was disturbed by sex life. So I got married. Now the disturbance is pretty much gone. So I feel myself, uh, Swami means, Totally dedicated to serve Krishna. So that's what I'm trying to do. Vishnu Vamsa, all glory to the assembled devotees. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. 
It is not that transcendence can only be achieved in pure mode of goodness, sattva. Well, you can go to the spiritual world anytime. But what we want is Sudha Shatva. Purified goodness. It's called the Panchama Purushartha. Lord Chaitanya said it. Artha, Dharma, religion, Artha, material enjoyment, Kama, satisfying the senses, Moksha and liberation. These are the called the Purushartha or the four achievements. But there is a Panchama Purushartha, a fifth one, which is Krishna Suprema, love of God. Then we have a comment from Sudarshan Das from Trinidad. Jai Jai Sira Prabhupada. And uh, uh, the, pre the predictor said of Bhakta Sira Prabhupada, uh, Sira Prabhupada is the Diksha Guru. A Diksha Guru must be a Mahabhagavat and, author, and authorized by predecessor Acharya and qualified. I'm not arguing with that. You're right. You are a frigging nuthead. Study Srila Prabhupada's words. What are you talking about? Are you crazy? I study Srila Prabhupada's books every day. I agree. One has to be authorized. Prabhupada said, when I give the order, he becomes guru. Ronald Singh, what is your understanding regarding the present day living guru experiment which you have participated in before? As I said, Krishna is in the heart. He's the Chetya Guru. You go and make Krishna your Chetya Guru and Krishna will arrange everything else. If he feels you need a living guru, he will send a living guru. If he feels you need to connect to the Kuru Parampara via Srila Prabhupada, he will arrange that. In fact, my experience is that even though Prabhupada is not physically present, I am more connected with him now than I was when I was physically with him. So there is no restriction. Guru Parampara is not about material body. Guru Parampara is about our spiritual body and that never becomes annihilated at any time. Thank you very much and we'll see you all on Friday. Hare Krishna.